which is Felix Heisel. And Felix, you can start sharing your screen now. Uh, Felix is architect and an assistant professor at Cornell University and uh, working in academia and actively exploring how circularity and industrialized construction can be combined and, and make interesting progress. Also working as an architect at 2HS Architects and Engineers in Germany, I think it is, right? And now I can see the screen is up. So Felix, the floor is yours. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you very much for inviting me, um, Daniel, um, especially for, for the hint that uh, it would be good to present one of our case studies, the Urban Mining and Recycling Unit uh, today. But I want to start with a little bit of a, a bigger picture. Um, so I'm, I'm calling this towards uh, circular construction. Um, and I think it's important to reiterate the the importance and also the effect that the built environment has on the current situation of the planet, the, the um, climate emergency, uh, resource inequalities, um, social injustice. Um, and if we just look at a couple numbers, then the built environment is responsible for more than 50% of resource extraction, more than 50% of all the waste that we produce and 40% of the carbon emissions. Um, and one of the solutions, and I mean, I'm preaching to the choir here, but um, uh, is, of course, to move from a linear economy to a, a circular economy, which in not only looks at the materials, but at, at the whole picture of, of a new economy. Um, and if we use one of the many available um, definitions of what a circular economy is, this one being uh, from the Al MacArthur Foundation, then it is a restorative and re a regenerative system by design um, that keeps products, components, and materials at their highest utility and value at all times, distinguishing between technical and biological cycles. And I want to focus on this word by design, because I think that's a kind of call for all of us, architects, engin engineers, um, citizens, um, to really, um, th this is kind of our domain, right? We have to change the way we we design, we have to change the way we build, um, and we have to do this at the beginning of the pipe and not at the end. Um, and so um, I'm speaking today as kind of the spokesperson of the Circular Construction Lab at, at Cornell University, where we try to do that. Um, and we try to address two aspects of this of this bigger picture. One is how can we de design differently? Uh, we do this mostly in teaching, um, finding different solutions, different materials, different connection systems, different ways of building. Um, and then in research, we concentrate on the question, what do we do with what is already there? How can we activate all these materials that we have out there in the built environment um, as, a, as an urban mine, um, to, to mention one of these keywords, which is actually, an, in my opinion, an inaccurate word, because we're not talking about the urban, we're talking about the anthropogenic mine mostly. Um, but um, it, it's, it's the, the question that we're, that we're dealing with here is, is how, how can we activate all these materials that were never intended to be reused or recycled. Um, and so there's a, there's a very different process um, that, that we have to address. Um, and, and one of the examples that combines both of these aspects, um, and it's a, an example that we built in 2018 in Switzerland, in Dübendorf, um, for, uh, for the EMPA, which is the Federal um, Testing and Material um, Research Lab in, um, in Switzerland. Um, is, uh, is the urban mining and recycling unit, which you can see here, that's the, the part that is pushed uh, into in between these concrete slabs in, in the very middle with the um, reused concrete uh, frame, a uh, reused copper frame, uh, excuse me. Um, and it's, it's important to talk a little bit about the site because um, the site here is the nest building. So everything around this unit is called nest. Um, and um, it's a it's an, a very intriguing system where you where you basically have a, a kind of shelf uh, structure that plugs in different modules to test um, 
research in full scale. Um, and we were asked if we could um, if we could prove that it is already possible today to build something that is 100 percent um, reusable and recyclable. So all of the materials that are in this building are designed in a way that they can fully be returned to their material cycles. Nothing goes to waste. That was the call. Um, and the other um, brief for us, of course, is that this is a, a, a not only um, a, a lab and not only a, a case study, but it is a, a unit where students of the Empire live. Um, and so it had to be, of course, fulfill all these um, criteria of, of everyday life. Um, plus, it had to, for us, um, look like something that you actually want to live in, so high quality living uh, standard. Um, and if I say we, um, uh, this is a, a collaboration between the offices of Werner Sobeck um, and, uh, and our office, um, my partner Dirk Kebel and, and myself, um, and um, I want to explain a little bit of what we do uh, and what we did here. So following this definition, there's three different cycles that you can um, follow materials around in this unit. Um, there's, of course, the very direct small loop about, um, about direct reuse, um, uh, which, which I will explain in a couple of examples. Uh, and then there's a technical cycle and the biological cycle, the technical being um, the, the smaller, the better, right? Um, and the biological is a very big metabolism where we can decompose elements, where we can uh, grow new new things by, uh, by re-sorting um, uh, or reassembling biological nutrients. Um, and the other aspect that is important is that this building was uh, module, uh, prefabricated in seven modules um, and then installed on site within one day. So you can see this uh, picture from the construction site here, um, where we had two cranes just lift these elements in place uh, and then push them to their specific locations uh, and drill them down. And I'll, I'll show on the next slide, I'll show a picture of how that worked. Um, what you see here on the right is basically the uh, disassembly plan. So uh, a kind of explosion drawing of the whole unit, locating which material is where, um, how is it connected, um, how can you take it apart again. Um, so all of these thoughts, how, how actually do I return this process, how, how reverse this process, how do I bring all these materials back into their, into their loops at the highest utility and value, um, it's already pre-designed into, into this system. Um, so this is a picture of the biggest unit um, being installed in place, and you can see basically the, uh, the foundations. Um, it's a railing system. Uh, these units have uh, kind of industrial rolls underneath, um, wheels underneath them. Um, and you, so you can just push them in place and drill them down with two screws. That's enough. Um, and of course, the important part is that you can really easily reverse that process. So once we take that module out again, we take these two screws out and the whole module basically rolls out of its out of its site. Um, we take it, put it on the crane again, we bring it back to the factory and disassemble it there. Um, one of the reasons for the prefabrication here is not only time, but it's the amount of control that we have over the material cycles. So you don't just cut something on site and you make dust and you lose materials in that process. But of course, if you do that, um, prefabricated, digitally controlled um, in the factory. Um, the amount of control is much higher. And so also the control over the material cycles, is, it's much higher because of that. Um, and then, of course, um, the devil is in the detail. So every little aspect of this unit had to be looked at because how do you install a bathroom without silicon, without glue? How do you, is there, it, or, or how do you build a wall without mortar? Um, these are the kind of questions that we then have to deal with in, in detail. Um, and I wanna show a couple of examples. So we um, used the product, for example, um, called Waste-Based Bricks. Uh, some of you might be familiar with that by the company Stone Cycling in the Netherlands. Um, these are um, bricks that are made out of um, 70 to 90% uh, mineral demolition waste. Um, and they come in these beautiful colors, uh, 
called salami or nougat or aubergine, um, according to their um, to their aesthetics. But of course, for us, the question was, can we invent a system uh, where we connect these stones that are made out of mineral waste uh, in a way that they don't have to be uh, made to waste again, right? Um, for, for the reuse project, uh, for the recycling process, but can they actually be reused directly? Um, and so uh, we developed a, a kind of um, wall system where these uh, stones have a, a tongue and groove system and they're slotted onto a metal grid. Um, and then basically at the top and the bottom, you have a screw and you tighten those so you can post tension um, this brick wall um, and thus, um, uh, um, kind of achieve the structural uh, qualities that, that we needed for this purpose. But of course, you can equally unscrew these uh, nuts and bolts, take out the, the bricks and reuse them directly without having to chip off any mortar, etc. Or Please, an example. I, I just want to give you a quick heads up uh, that uh, two more two minutes to sure. uh, to wrapping up. Yeah, there's a lot to say, but I'll, I'll go through this. Um, quick example from the bathrooms. Um, on the left, you see uh, a, a bathroom made from a product called Magna Glass. This is uh, um, reused on um, glass from uh, car window screens. Um, and on the right, you see um, old kitchen countertops scrambled into, um, into plates. And of course, here, the, the trick was the bigger the, the bigger format, um, the less um, problems you have sealing it. Um, and so all of the um, sealants here are dry caskets. It's just pressure um, with, with screws. And so you can also just take these screws out, take those um, big plates out and, uh, and return them into the, into the cycle. These are these products close up. Of course, the beauty of a product and the history of a product is essential if you wanna um, convince someone that, that this is the way to go. Um, last really exciting aspect of this is that we also had several products where we didn't find something on the market that is circular and so we were able to go the extra mile and for example in, in this case uh, 3D print um, faucets out of, uh, out of steel, out of stainless steel, um, making sure that this is 100% stainless steel in there so there is no plastics on the inside for the mechanism. There is no uh, copper inside. Um, this is just all the same material, which is, of course, possible through a 3D printing process. And then we brought in the biological components. The insulation is made out of mycelium. Um, in this case, um, uh, yeah, bring, bringing in very new uh, products that, that we develop partly ourselves and of course have partners. And um, this aspect here is a question, how can we of course look at new economic systems? So once we have products available on the market that are circular, um, what does that mean, right? And so uh, in this case, for example, the carpet is only rented because the company decided, well, I have a 100% recyclable product. I would be, it would be a bad idea to bring that to a client and give it to him, not having control over that resource. And so these are just, these will be returned afterwards. And so we developed this material library and, and it's available for everyone, um, uh, physical and digitally um, on, on, the, on this website, nest.umar.net, nest um, where you can look at, at all the materials that were put into this building. And we also implemented it on the uh, Madasta um, to create a building passport for this. Um, and right now, this is the highest ranked uh, building within this um, system, with a 96% circularity indicator. Um, and I'm going to skip that. Uh, and just if you want more information on that, we've, we're also publishing wildly um, on uh, the technical cycle, the biological cycle, and just coming out in two months on circular construction. And with that, I'll leave it for the questions. Thanks a lot, uh, Felix.